Behold, the Lord, the Mighty One, has come, and kingship is in his grasp, and power and dominion. We celebrate, of course, today the manifestation of Christ to the nations as revealed to the Magi. Holy Mass is offered for the intentions of the people of our parish, but praise also pray for one of our oldest parishioners, John Harley, who died earlier today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you, though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you the Lord now rises, and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look round, all are assembling and coming towards you, your sons from far away and daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight you will grow radiant, your heart throbbing and full, since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels in throngs will cover you, and dromedaries of Midian and Ephra. Everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense and singing the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. All, All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. All nations All shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. In his days justice shall flourish and peace till the moon fails. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the great river to earth's bounds. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. The kings of Tarshish and the sea coast shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. 
for he shall save the poor when they cry and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and save the lives of the poor. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You have probably heard how I have been trusted by God with the grace he meant for you, and that it was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of the mystery. This mystery that has now been revealed through the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets <coughs> excuse me, was unknown to any men in past generations. It means that pagans now share the same inheritance, that they are the parts of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do the Lord homage. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant King of the Jews? they asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed, and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah, for out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on ahead to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and returned to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh. Our culture of giving gifts at Christmas is not only a very enjoyable one, but it's a deeply Christian one. Offering gifts reminds us of the greatest gift that God gave the world, the gift of his only begotten Son. And it's further emphasised by the tradition that the wise men from the East brought Jesus gifts at his birth. The gifts represent their love and their tokens of the affection of these men who spent their lives in contemplation of the heavens. Obviously, these were men with restless hearts. They were driven by a quest for God and the salvation of the world. They were filled with expectation, not satisfied with their security and their respectable place in society. They were looking for something greater. They were no doubt 
learned men, knowledgeable about the heavens, and probably philosophically trained and formed. But they desired more than simply knowledge about things. They wanted, above all else, to know what is essential. They wanted to know how to succeed in being human. And therefore they wanted to know if God exists, and where, and how he exists, whether he's concerned about us, and about how we can encounter him. Their outward pilgrimage was an expression of their inward journey, the inner pilgrimage of their hearts. They were men who sought God and were on the way towards him, seekers in search of God. Our inner pilgrimage of faith towards God occurs above all else in prayer. St. Augustine once said that prayer is ultimately nothing more than the realisation of our yearning for God. Instead of yearning, we could also translate the word as restlessness and say that prayer should detach us from our false security, from our being trapped within material and visible things and should give us a restlessness for God and so an openness to and concern for one another. The Magi were also, and above all else, men of courage, the courage born of faith. Courage was needed to grasp the meaning of the star as a sign to follow towards the unknown, on paths filled with all kinds of dangers. We can imagine that they were laughed at by those who were only too ready to mock the daring of such men, setting out on such an uncertain purpose. But for these men, seized inwardly by God, seeking the truth, meant more than the taunts of the world, so apparently clever, as we know from our own contemporary context. Today, anyone who lives and proclaims the faith of the church is on many points out of step with the mindset of the world. Today's prevalent agnosticism has its own dogmas and is extremely intolerant of anything that dares to challenge it. Courage is needed to contradict the prevailing mindset. And this courage is not about aggression or forcefulness, but rather in being clear and firm in the face of negativity. It's the courage demanded of those whom the Lord sends out like sheep among wolves. And the ultimate test is to be like the disciples who in the Acts of the Apostles, after having been hauled in before the Sanhedrin, reprimanded and flogged for speaking about Jesus, left the council rejoicing that they were considered worthy to suffer dishonour for the name of Christ. The wise men followed the star with their gifts and made their act of homage to Jesus. They did this with all the simplicity of children who are never shy in asking for what they want. I was very touched in the last week when I read about the discovery of a letter that Pope Benedict wrote to the baby Jesus when he was just seven years old. It was actually discovered in the personal effects of his sister. He'd written, Dear baby Jesus, quickly come down to earth. You will bring joy to many children. Also bring me joy. I would like a mass book with the prayers, some green clothes for saying mass, and a heart of Jesus. I will always be good. Greetings from Joseph Ratzinger. Each year the nativity of our Lord never lets us forget that we have to be as simple as children when we come before God. But also, with the wisdom of the Magi, as cunning as serpents and as pure as doves, 
as Jesus would teach later in his life. It was this simplicity and wisdom that led the wise men to Jesus, but also sent them back home by a different route to escape Herod. And it was Mary that they encountered also at that time, as she presented the Lord to them for worship. This is her role still, because all of the doctrines about Mary are essentially Christ-centered, and they bring us to him. So that may that same star of faith keep us intent on our path on earth, which we must ever be seeking in, finding, and adoring the Christ, who alone gives our lives and our world meaning. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Look with favour, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy. Heaven and earth are full of you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope and Adam, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our nature, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord and God Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clatus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to our altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them. Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our what? Hallowed be thy kingdom. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord.
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Joseph, holy guardian angels, 